Let's get into the key games. United, Villa. Villa went up 2 0. McGinn in the 21st, then Donker, a Wolves legend, in the 26th. Uh, we thought the route was on. Michael and I were giggling. We were laughing. We're kind of making fun of Nick, low key, in the chat. Same. <laughs> Garnacho in the 59th and in the 71st, and then Hoyland in the 82nd. United come back. They get a dub. The only thing I know from this game, in 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 all, in all honesty, is despite United's best efforts to keep a known like physical abuser on their bench, in Anthony, he should never play again because he's not as good as these guys. He's not as good as Garnacho. What a dude! That's all I'm trying to say, right, Michael? Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you touch this one just, first. Pause. You're just uh. Um, I, I, I was running when this game was going on, so I, I wanted to be back for the end of the game. I walk in, United is down 2-0, and I go, I love this league. This league is so great. And then I had to watch it all just unfold. Um, so I didn't get to see the first half, but you told me, you told me Villa was like pretty good, playing pretty yeah. well. It, they must, it, they must have fallen off a cliff in the second because they, I never see that saw them even have the ball most of the time. I don't think. Yes, I think Villa didn't play as well as in the first half. But United was like shit in the first half. Like that United yeah. team in the second half was leaps and bounds better than what was happening in the first half and maybe what we've actually seen for probably the first half of the season. Like that was the first actually like cohesive soccer or football yeah. what that I've seen United play for 45 minutes. The problem is they can't do it for 90 and you're not always gonna have a team that blows a two nothing lead, but like that was the that was the only time where I was like, holy shit, United actually looks competent, and that's yeah. what the difference was. I I totally agree, and you know, Michael, if you think back to like the Liverpool Arsenal game last year, where like Xhaka loses his head, and that's the catalyst that switches the momentum in that game. I don't think there was anything like that here, to be honest. Uh, like Garnacho's first goal that got called off, I think that's gave them the believe because like that didn't... was only called off sides because they passed it in front when they were past yeah. everyone and they should have never passed it but i think that was the hey we can do this and because he basically had a hat trick if essentially yeah. without getting it and like i think it was more for him that was a confidence because he's young enough that he's like i just scored it didn't count but like look at me and then he just started attacking more so that's a fair point then because in my the other assessment that i had in this was the the villa Offside trap has been so good this year. They're like the best team in Europe with the offside trap. And when he got called off sides, I think Michael, you and I, that was peak. Let's giggle at Nick time. Cause we're I like, didn't save. <laughs> I was just like, Oh, you guys can't even score this way. What the hell? I, I not, I'll let you go in a second, but that yeah. moment of that offsides was literally when the candle was open. And I was like, well, you don't have to burn that today. <laughs> like, and then it was yeah. straight downhill. Absolutely. But I do think, if, if I'll run with your thought process of that being the catalyst, like it was kind of like Man United, the Raptors testing the fence and the fence being the off, offsides trapped because that's how they created all those other goals. And like they did look cohesive. They did look like they had a plan for the first time this year, probably. And yeah. I do also think a negative for Villa at times in that second half, they, they create but they just looked tired and they looked like they didn't have the legs anymore. And, you know, no like shit to them. I know they tied uh, in Europe just a couple days ago, but going from city, Arsenal, Brentford, Sheffield, they just tied as well. Sorry about that. I didn't think about that one. Sheffield and then uh, United, like that's not an easy route. And I think, Probably the legs started getting tired against Sheffield. Obviously, that one was at home. I think they, for lack of a better description, sorry, parents, I think they shot their load early here and then just had nothing left. I think yeah. that's fair. I think, too, this is what I... I, I don't want to get PTSD from my argument with Nick, you know, two episodes ago on here. But <laughs> it is just... United have talent. I don't think we've ever said that, like, they don't have a bunch of people that can play. Bruno Fernandez is obviously an unbelievable player. What Fernandez are you going to get? What Hoyland are you going to get? Rashford, Garnacho, whatever. 
That's the problem. They're they're not consistent. And the first half, absolutely. We talk about how Villa away are not the same as Villa home. This was Villa away, and you know, you home and away, you don't know what Man Man United you're going to get either. So really, how bad they were the first half probably gave Villa the license to go for it and and be a little play a little more free and get those goals because they still had you know a very good XG, still had a lot of chances that they created. But the the ability to, to switch gears and play so much better in the second half and come back and win that game, it's great. That's that's awesome. And I, I think if you're a United fan, you have to be pumped up about that. But you you want to see something that can be translated game to game to game after this. And what I said against Liverpool, there's no way that they can translate that performance to West Ham and then to Villa necessarily because they don't know what they're doing a lot of the times. And those players haven't been playing with each other because they've had injuries as well. Um, they haven't been able to, to create that cohesion. And I hope if you're a United fan, I hope this is kind of that catalyst for you, but I would not be shocked if it's back to poor performances again. And then, you know, maybe you pull something out in the second half or you have a good first half and then you blow it in the second I think I think that we'll go ahead, go ahead, Dylan. I'm like seventy percent probably like Michael. You're right, but I'll be Nick right now. Um, Fuck you. In more of the fact of, I, I said it in the beginning with uh, Hoyland. Like the monkey might have finally come off the back though. They've been playing with a lot of like I like I don't know like tense I guess or like so mm-hmm. much pressure put on them. That if they let's say come out and beat um, who they have coming up is it Boring? Nottingham Forest? Nottingham Forest at Nottingham Forest. So if they like to be honest, in a normal year this shouldn't matter. If they can come back and go to um, the City Ground and win that game where they control it against a City team, uh, a Nottingham Forest team, sorry, um, that has the new coach bump and has looked a little bit more formidable at that point, and they control that game, I would potentially start leaning towards United is going in the right way. Because I think, like I said, they've been tense, they have all this pressure, and maybe what happened in that second half is what finally propels them to start playing more free and having confidence. Because we've all played sports. Sometimes you need to see the ball go into the hole. Sometimes you need to complete a screen pass. Seeing the ball go in the back of the net might have been literally that moment that it just clicks. For sure. That's 30% I, of me. I think 70% goes exactly to what you're saying. <laughs> well, but again, like you, if you have, if you have like five great performances in a, or like consistent, I'm not even saying great performances, five just consistent wins. performances in a row, and then you have a bad game, you're like, had a bad game. It's fine. You know, it happens. Shit happens. Um, the issue with them is like, I, when they have a bad performance, I don't know if that's just what they do or if that's what their their level is or anything else. Cause I know it's not I know it's not their level because they, they've looked unreal that second half and like, you know, Garnacho and Hoyland were both great. But I, I just as well as I could see them winning two one at Nottingham Forest, I could see them losing this game two to one. I, like easily. I agree. Easily I could see it. Can I flip the conversation to Villa real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Um because John, you brought up their high line that's been fantastic this year. Do you think United just kind of figured it out towards the end that it gives a blueprint, though, to other teams to finally attack them? Or a lot of teams, let's say, don't have the talent to do what United did unless you're, you know, a City, a Liverpool, or an Arsenal, or anything I, like that? I think a really good high line is the easiest trick to overcome. Like, I, I think it's. They got us on it a lot. Like, we were not prepared for it at all, and we didn't make adjustments within the game. I think, honestly, how we second played time against... Second time around a problem? What's up? You think second time around, playing everyone twice is pro- going to be a problem then? I, I do. Truthfully, I think it's it's like... We didn't make any adjustments in that game. I think you can honestly like chalk that loss up to maybe uh, Pep. But I, I feel like... When you're playing a high line, if you do it really, really well, you're going to get off sides. Like, you just are, because it's the nature of the beast. 
but it's really, really easy for teams to be like, hey, we've seen them do this three or four times. Let's make this run adjustment. Let's make that run adjustment. And I think that I, I don't know for sure, because if I did know for sure, we wouldn't be on this podcast with such a small audience. <laughs> but I do think like I do think like they're going to lose six games in the second half. Bold I take. Can see it. Put it on the board. Well, they, they got, okay, I they got, so. I, I think that, I don't think that's bold because they got to go to Arsenal. They got to go to Man, Man City. Um, those are games that they, that they won. that are huge games that they're going to have to flip the script on. And they're right now, it seems like home. I guess they did draw Sheffield United at home, which is like <laughs> real bad, but at home, they seem to be very good, very consistent. Um, on the road. I don't know either. Cause not saying they, they're going to lose out on the road or anything, but they don't look like the same team at all. Yeah. Like, I'll say this. They do have a ton of talent, obviously, and they're a good team, and Unai's great. But, I like you said, I think second time through the batting order here, that high line isn't going to be as effective because you're just going to have trailing runners that are going to get the ball instead of the the first the first cut and the first run. Last, last thing on this, if you want. Um, I love the commentary during those games though like that manchester united villa game where they're talking about just time your run better and i'm like don't you think that they're trying to do that (laughs) like you know so it's like throw a fucking strike like Mm -hmm. yeah no shit i'm not trying to throw a ball here i'm not trying to be offside um but i i do think it's one of those things where it is like such a just time your run better stay on side but then once you get out there and you have to play against it it's so it, it's not as easy as you think, obviously, because they keep getting people offside. But I do think there are gonna gonna be some teams and some players that just have that ability to time that run better on different mm-hmm. teams. And they're like I mean, like I said, we did that a couple years ago. Not exactly the same, but we did the high line. There were times where people just absolutely cut through us because we took that risk. So yeah. it's gonna happen for sure. I, I think you're gonna see, like I said, a lot of dummy runs. And if we're talking about this game in particular, Once you're in that back line and you've been catching offsides, catching offsides, catching offsides, once you give up that initial goal, you peak. You like start, you start like, oh, do I need to go back because you're afraid you're going to give up another one? And I think, yeah, honestly, that's a lot of what happened against this United team was like, once they started figuring it out, A, it was key, but also Villa started getting a little bit gun shy on, oh, step up now. And then whatever, they're, they're going to, they're going to hold back. So I, I don't want to call them out of the race because I, I think that's unfair because they've worked their way to this point, but I don't see them sticking in it is, is my opinion. Michael, you, yeah, you with I, that? I, I kind of agree because I, I could, couldn't help but like realize watching that game up 2-0, I, I couldn't believe how many times I saw like two United players against two Villa players. Like mm-hmm. there was just no... And again, that's like a little bit of... Ange is always going to play that way with Spurs. I'm sure like Unai is very similar and like these are our tactics. This is what we're going to do. We're going to keep doing it the whole game. But at the same time, I've seen United try to break down a low block. I've seen them try to, you know, intricate passes through to get a shot. If I'm telling you right now, if they just packed it in up to O, there's no way they lose that game. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I will cover my ass here, Dylan, before we move on to the Arsenal game too. Six losses. If Unai makes no adjustments, for sure, they could still get six losses. But they Unai, not, could, I think he's a good, he's a good enough coach though, where he'll see like, all right, they figured out the, the offsides trap. Let's do something different. Like, yeah, and that's how coaching should be. 